Hello everyone. Today we gonna build this 3.5 inch freestyle FPD drone. So, let's start with all the parts we need for this build. The frame is the Flyfish RC Volador VX3.5 not the VX3. And the motors are Isido 2004-3000KV but I highly recommend the T-Motor 1604 or the 1804. The camera is CADS Radial 2, the night version but I also recommend the normal radial version which is a bit less expensive. The stack is SpeedyB F405 Mini with a 35 AESC. For the VTX I choose the Rush Tank Solo Mini which comes with the linear antenna but I bought the Rush Series Circular Polarizing Antenna for better performance. The receiver is SpeedyB Nano Expressors. And the props are the Gemfin Hurricane 3520 which you can buy two pairs for around $3. The transmitter I have is the Radiomaster TX15 which is a bit more expensive but you can buy the Radiomaster Pocket for around $70 which is a solid option in my opinion. The goggles I have are the Echine F100 but I highly recommend to buy something better like the Skyzone Cobra X or SD. You will only buy it once. You also gonna need a soldering iron, solder wire and flux. I'm using the Secure S99. This actually was sent to me by Secure a long time ago to review but I didn't have the time. Apologize to them. I will leave a link in the video description to this soldering iron. You also gonna need a screwdriver and tweezers. Alright, these are all the parts we need. So let's give it a go. But before we put anything on the frame we need to solder the wires to the VTX, to receiver and put some solder on all the pads we gonna use on flight controller and ESC. On the VTX we gonna need solder only for wires, ground, DC in, smart audio and the video. And after we soldered the wires on the receiver. We gonna put the cover to the VTX and use the heat shrink tube that came with the receiver. But don't forget to mount the antenna first before heat shrinking it. When soldering on the flight controller be careful to not make a short between the pads, those pads are very tiny, so make sure to not leave a solder bridge between them. The most difficult part is probably to solder the battery wires on the ESC. You will have a hard time soldering the battery wires, especially on the negative terminal, and especially if you don't have a good soldering iron. It's an easy job for the motor pads, but I still suggest that you be careful not to short circuit the pads because later when the drone is ready we'll wake up with magic smoke coming out. I suggest that you use a smoke stopper or use a laboratory power supply with current limit when you power up the drone for the first time. First time we will put the VTX and camera on the stack frame just to see how it fit or if we need to mount the stack in a different orientation. When you mount the stack on the frame, you have to take care of the orientation of the flight controller. There is a small arrow drawn on it that indicates which is the front and which is the back. That is the direction in which the drone will fly. Of course we can mount it in the reverse and correct the orientation later in beta flight. And now that we are going to permanently mount the VTX and the camera on the frame. I forgot to mention that for the stack I used the screws that came with it, and for the VTX I used screws that I had because the ones that came with the VTX were too long. It is absolutely not necessary to fix the VTX with screws. A simple method would be to use double-sided adhesive tape. Before mounting the VTX I put some 2mm spacers between the frame and the VTX to have better cooling. Now I don't know if it was absolutely necessary. 
but in any case it cannot cause any harm to have them there. I put the receiver in the 3D printed mount that came with the frame and then I mounted it on the back of the frame, making sure to put the wires into the hole towards the stack and the antenna in the back, because that's where we'll mount it. And now, before mounting the motors on the frame, we had a small problem with these motors. The e-clip that holds the motor shaft is a little outside and will touch the frame when we mount the motor. To solve this problem we can put some M2 washers between the motor and the frame or we can make a small bevel in the frame as I did. This way there will be no problem. But make sure not to bevel too deeply as it could weaken the strength of the arm where you will tighten the screws. In any case, this is only valid if you use the same motors as me, if not you don't have to do this. To mount the motors I will use the screws that came with the frame, which surprisingly has thread lock applied on them. Now that everything is mounted on the frame I will shorten the wires from the VTX and camera and see how to mount the wires from the battery and the capacitor. But first let's cut the wires, but leaving them intact on the receiver those because they seem to be conveniently at the right length. And later I will cut the wires from the motors making sure to cut them to the correct length. Because we can make them shorter but we can't make them longer. Here we can solder them from top or from bottom. But that is up to you to decide, it is just a matter of preference. Soldering the wires from the battery to the ESC is a bit of a challenge. Especially on the negative side because the ground plane is quite large and will absorb heat very quickly. Here we need to use a larger soldering tip and increase the temperature of the soldering iron, otherwise we will have a cold solder joint, and this will later affect the drone's performance, as the resistance will increase. So, now that I've soldered the wires from the battery and the capacitor, I'm going to connect the ESC to the flight controller and then we're going to mount the stack on the frame. But before that, make sure to mount the flight controller with the pads where we're going to solder the wires from the VTX, receiver, and camera facing up, otherwise obviously we won't be able to solder the wires. So, now I'm going to solder the wires from the VTX. Here we have four wires, ground, DC in, smart audio, and video. The negative wire to ground, DC in to plus 9 volts, not 5 volts. Keep that in mind because the VTX can be powered from 7 volts to 37 volts if I'm not mistaken, the smart audio wire to TX1, and we solder the video wire to the VTX pad on the flight controller. From the camera we only have 3 wires, red, black and yellow which we will solder in this way, red to the 5 volt pad, black to ground and yellow to the cam pad, the order in which we solder them does not matter. And now I'm going to solder the wires from the Express RS receiver. Here we also have the power wires, red and black which we solder to 5 volts and ground. And the other wires, yellow and green we will solder to TX2 and RX2 but here we have to take into account how we solder them. Because we will solder the TX from the receiver to the RX on the flight controller. And the RX from the receiver we will solder to the TX. Finally, I'll solder the wires from the motors. Here we have to be extra careful not to bridge the wires when soldering them. Always take a second look at the solder joints. It's better to be extra cautious. And with that, we're pretty much done with the soldering. And our drone is ready and looks something like this. But before we do the flight test I'm going to do some configurations in beta flight. And we're going to upgrade the ESC drivers with BlueJ. But before that let's take a look at the weight of the drone and compare it to another 3.5 inch drone that I made. As you can see, the drone weighs 198 grams without the battery. And with a 650 milliamp hour battery it reaches 270 grams, which takes us well over the 250 gram limit. 
and with an 850 mAh battery it will be close to 300 grams. If we compare it to the other drone, it weighs 171 grams without the battery, 26 grams less, largely because we use 1604 motors which are lighter, about 11 grams compared to the 2004 motors in our build which weigh around 16 grams each, which means that this drone with smaller motors the drone will weigh just under 250 grams. At 245 grams with the 650 milliamp hour battery. Another thing I want to show you, just look at the difference in size of the camera lenses. Radial 2 versus Radial 2 night version that I use on our build. Alright, now I will bind the drone with the transmitter. I will use the simplest method by connecting and disconnecting the battery three times, which puts the receiver in bind mode. On the transmitter we enter the system menu and select Express LRS and scroll down to bind and then we connect and disconnect the battery three times. And lastly we press bind on the transmitter, and we are done. Now we will connect the drone to the PC. And in the beta flight configurator first we go to the receiver tab to see if it works correctly or if we need to change something there. And as we can see the receiver is set to the SBUS protocol, we need to change that to the Crossfire protocol. And finally we press save and everything should work without problems. On the modes tab, here I will add range to arm and disarm the drone to AUX1, and to AUX2 I will add angle mode, of course you can add other things, you can also put beeper in case the drone crashes and you can't find it, you can put GPS rescue in case you want to mount a GPS module on the drone, or pit mode to reduce the VTX power when the drone is disarmed, and so on. On the ports tab, we set URT1 to TBS smart audio. Because that's where we soldered the VTX. We save and reboot and we're almost done. The VTX is recognized. But we need to configure the channels and bands so it can communicate with the FPV goggles. At the command line interface I will paste the VTX table that I copied from Oscar Liang's website. And now we have a fully functional VTX. All we have to do is connect the battery to the drone. In order for the VTX to work we must power the drone with the battery. Keep in mind that the VTX will not work powered from USB. Another thing would be, if you keep the drone powered for a long time I recommend using a fan to cool the VTX and the flight controller. On the OSD tab I will put on the screen the battery voltage, the average cell voltage, the flight controller temperature, the current draw, what I also like is to have the throttle percentage on the screen and a few other things. You can display whatever you like, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Alright. Now we will go to the motors tab where we will set the correct rotation direction of the motors. Alright. Here I spin each motor individually to see if it spins in the right direction. We can check this by keeping our fingers lightly pressed on each motor when it spins or we can use a piece of paper by keeping it lightly pressed on top of the motor dome. I was lucky here because all the motors are already spinning in the correct direction. I don't have to make any changes. If you still need to change the direction of the motors go to motors direction and change from there. And now before we go and do the test flight we have to do one more thing. We connect the drone to the ESC configurator, which is online, we don't have to install any programs. Here we will change the BL Heli firmware which is outdated and no longer maintained. We change it with BlueJ which is a modern and open source firmware which also offers us features such as bidirectional D-Shot and some other features. Alright guys. Now that we are done with all that, we can go and do the first flight with this drone. So, now we are at the field where I usually fly my drones. It is a gloomy winter day and it is about 4 degrees outside. It is a bit cold and I expect the flight time to be a little shorter. For this flight I used the Tat R Line 4's 850 milliamp hour battery. And I got a 6 minute flight time. The first minute is not counted because I armed the drone but I struggled a bit to have a video feed in the FPV goggles. Anyway, as soon as I took off I noticed the problem. The video image is a little shaky. I suspect the cause to be the motors. They are probably not well balanced. 
And another thing I noticed is that the motors have a bit of play in the shaft, and on two motors the bearings make a bit of noise. I mean what should we expect from some motors that cost $35 or the equivalent of 30 euros? The quality control leaves a bit to be desired. In any case at this moment when I am editing the video, I am waiting for the new motors to receive them, I ordered T-Motor 1806, 3400 kV, which are a little lighter, 14.3 grams compared to 16.5 grams. It's not a big difference but it counts, and in addition having a higher kV which will give me a higher prop speed and a better responsiveness of the drone at the cost of losing a little efficiency. If this video goes well maybe I will make a follow-up video with the new motors. In any case apart from that shaking I really like this type of motors especially since I have a longer flight time with them. They were definitely not made for more aggressive flight but instead for efficiency and for cruising. So I'm freezing here and shaking and the battery voltage is low so I'm going to end the video here. I'll leave you links to all the products I use for this drone but keep in mind that the prices may differ at this time from when I bought them. But if you decide to build your drone now AliExpress has a Christmas sale during this period and you might be lucky enough to find them at an even lower price. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you like this video. See you in the next one.